I've actually never been more scared to read books because I'm a wimp, but <laughs> let's hope I actually love some of these. And welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we're chatting about all the horror books on my TBR. <laughs> it was scary. It was really scary. So I did this a while back with all the murder mystery books on my TBR and it was super fun. So I thought in time for spooky season, spooky season is approaching. We're all looking for some good horror wrecks. I thought I'd do this video so maybe it would help you pick what books maybe you want to read in October and give you kind of a little bit of a sneak peek for some of the books I'm hoping to read in October. I don't know how many of these I'm actually going to get to but we're gonna we're gonna hope. <laughs> Horror typically isn't a genre I read a ton of but I do enjoy it when I read it. Also I'm a scaredy cat you guys. I'm a fucking I'm a scaredy cat. I'm a wimp. Don't really watch horror films. The Shining is the only horror film I've watched and The Exorcist when I was three days old. <laughs> What? Listen, my dad watched it and I was in the room. <laughs> but horror is always something I want to read more of. I think horror and sci-fi are the two genres I know I always enjoy, but I don't read a lot of. So we're going to go through all of the books that I own that are classified as horror. Now, some of these you may think, Megan, that's horror adjacent at best. <laughs> I think a lot of these are very much mild horror, <laughs> but all of them are classified as horror on Goodreads. So like, I am right, but they're very mild, mild, mild horror, like mild horror. We're gonna go through all the physical ones I own first, but there's quite a lot that I have on audiobook or ebook. We'll go through them after this. Let's start with the one that I just received. <gasps> it is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a haunted house horror book. Get Out meets Haunting of Hill House. So excited for this. Oh my god. This is one of my most anticipated releases for the kind of latter half of this year. You'll know I've talked about it quite a bit on my channel. I very kindly received this from Harper360YA. This is an arc. I'm not sure when this comes out. Oh, hang on. It's an American date. 21st of <laughs> Okay, so I think this comes out tomorrow for me, today for you watching this in the US, but I think it comes out on the 30th of September in the UK. I'm gonna be reading this in October. I'm very, very excited to get to it. I'm ready. Okay, whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Whenever you're ready. I've never actually read a whole full length novel from Tiffany D. Jackson. I do own Grown. Tiffany Jackson is just an author I feel like I'm gonna love. Like generally, I think a five star author for me. So I'm really excited to read this. This is probably the only book that I'm like, come rain, come hail, whatever happens in my life in October, I'm reading this book. <laughs> a book on the flip side that I've owned for a long, long time and has been a five star prediction for a long, long time, a book I've wanted to read for a long, long time. It is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I know that um, this is about our protagonist's cousin has recently married into this family. She's living with her husband's family and she contacts her saying like, they're trying to poison me. <laughs> It's kind of a question of, are they actually trying to poison her or is something wrong with her and her mental health? And Naomi, I think, goes to go and investigate it. It's set in 1950s Mexico. I've heard so many good things. Silvia Moreno Garcia is another author I've never actually read from before, but I want to read all of their books already. Like, I want to read all of her books right now. I've heard this book is actually quite scary. Like, I think Mexican Gothic is actually surprisingly scary. There's something I know about it that I know other people know about it, but people have told me off for mentioning it before because they're like, Megan, it's a spoiler. But like, if you know, you know. And if you don't, I don't just tell you. I'm just, I'm sorry to you. <laughs> if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. If you know, you know. If you don't know, like, I honestly feel bad for you. Like Another one that I have hauled really recently is The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. This is about this boy who has always been able to see and hear ghosts, but they've always kind of left him alone. They've always just kind of been ambivalent towards him. But then a serial killer ghost starts talking to him and is in his brain. And I think we also follow the perspective of that ghost. I was watching um, Liv from Olivia Reed Delate speak about this and she read it. She really enjoyed it, but she was talking about how unsettling it is to be in that character's brain who we know has done these terrible things and like you're almost starting to understand the shitty life that he's had but like 
he's an awful person so like you don't, you don't want to sympathize with him at all i think there's a lot of trigger warnings in this i hadn't heard that until i watched olivia's video but i've heard like pretty much every trigger warning you can imagine in terms of abuse and abuse of a child is in there so like go into it if you're thinking of reading it with a lot of care but I, I'm hoping this is another one I'm going to read in October, definitely. Another one I've wanted to read for ages is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starlin. Now, I would love to read this in October because in November I am co-hosting the Literary Dead Book Club with Books and Lala. And the book we're reading is Caitlin Starling's new book, The Death of Jane Lawrence, I think it's called. So I would like to read this first so that I know what I think of Caitlin Starling's writing. But uh, this is about this woman who's like going deep underground on this mission the only contact she has with another human is the human in her ear on this mission too and i think it's kind of sapphic between them but also we can't trust that other person really interested in this this is like another i think five star prediction it feels perfect for this time of year so i'm hoping i'm gonna get to it but like i don't know if i am <laughs> Then another one I'm so excited to read is Horrid by Katrina Leno. Now I can literally tell you nothing about this, okay? Okay? The level of unprofessionalism, far too much. Because I just bought it because I loved You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. That was like literally the reason I bought it and I love the cover. I love the flowers on the cover. That's, That's kind of it. Not gonna lie. lie. I know it's something about our protagonist, like, after her father's death, moving house, and there's something very unsettling about the house, I think. It's got the word ghost on the back. Is it, are we haunted? I don't know. But I know it's gonna be surreal and strange because Katrina Leno's writing. Oh, so good. This is another five star prediction, but I literally know nothing. So. <laughs> A super short horror that I'm very excited to get to is The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. This is like a slasher of two friends who go on this three day hike. A detour leads them straight into a waking nightmare and then into something far worse. I'm very excited. I've heard mixed things about Stephanie Perkins kind of new slashery books, but the trailer for There's Someone In Your House kind of got me, not gonna lie kind of got me interested. So I feel like this may be a good read um, for October because it is so short and it's kind of like fun slashery YA. And I just love the cover and the vibes of these books. Another one, I think this is on the five star prediction list. A lot of these horrors are on five star prediction list is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is about four friends who 10 years ago shot an elk. Now a decade later, these men are being stalked themselves hunted. I have heard so many good things about this book. It was really big like a year ago or so on booktube so I feel like I am really late to the party <laughs> um because yeah this is like one of the books that I think I'm gonna love the most. I just have struggled to fit it into a video. I'm honestly looking at all these books and they are books I'm so excited for so like maybe I am a horror gal. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? This is probably one of the books I've heard the most good things about on this list so someone make me read it. <laughs> then I have another newer release is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. So I've heard pretty good things about this as well. This only just came out. This is about this uh, group of women who survived serial killers massacres um, years ago and they have made the support group because like it's hard no one else really understands when you've been through that kind of stuff they've made the support group where they meet and talk to each other about how they're feeling and then one of them stops turning up it turns out that someone knows the group exists and wants to pick them off kind of one by one and I'm really excited for this I've heard a lot of people say that it's the kind of book you're going to like read in one sitting even though it's quite big it's like a super fast pace and it's got like some mixed media elements in it I think after every chapter there's like maybe like a newspaper entry or stuff like that I'm really excited and I've never read any Grady Hendrix I really want to read Horror Store My Best Friend's Exorcism like I want to read all of Grady Hendrix stuff so I'm hoping this will be a good starting place then I have these two which are one and three number one and number three in like a companion series but I don't think you have to read them strictly in order but I have hashtag murder trending and hashtag no escape which are these kind of dystopian horror murder novels this one is about where people vote on these executions that are like aired live and it's like a form of entertainment and this one is about escape rooms that i think are aired and the and the contestants start dying gruesome deaths basically i think i got these both for my birthday at the start of the year so should read them soon <laughs> Let's go, bitch. Why is she always uh, late for everything? I can't take it. 
like it. I picked these both up because Emma from Drinking By My Shelf recommended them. I haven't had a lot of people speak about them outside of that, but I want to read Murder Trending soon, hashtag Murder Trending, because this is the first one. And I think it's going to be like a very unique kind of like rompy horror, like kind of campy horror. And then the last physical book, last physical horror book I own is Pine by Francine Toon. This is about a very like tight knit community and Lauren and her father find a woman stumbling along the road one night they take her back to their house and then in the morning she's gone I don't really know much about it other than that this was a Warstones like thriller of the month which is why I bought it when I bought it I got influenced into buying it I often get influenced into buying their thriller of the month if it's something I'm like vaguely interested in but then I haven't heard great reviews about this one afterwards but something about it like the kind of like winteriness of it and bleakness of it gets me very excited. I feel like horror is just such, oh my God, this is making me so excited for autumn and winter because it's so good for that kind of time of year. I think I will be reading this pretty soon because I have a video idea that this will be in. Um, so I think I will be reading this in the next couple months, maybe like in November or early next year. And then let's just quickly go through the audiobooks and ebooks that I have. I don't know as much about these, so we're gonna like fly through them. First, we've got The Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. All I know about this is that it's pretty much like another Final Girl book. There's a lot out there because there's Final Girls by Riley Sager as well. I don't really know what this is about. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I've saved it. I think it's on script, so I saved it because Again, I'm interested in Stephen Graham Jones's stuff. It's about this girl who um, survived this like massacre. And it says, when she chooses former final girls to replace the slaughtered members of her original homecoming court, it's not just a fight for survival, it's a fight to become the final girl. So I don't know if they're like killing each other. I think it's very like 80s slasher movie inspired, but I am interested. My interest is peaked. It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. That could be a good audiobook listen to in um in October. Then I have Ring Shout by P.J. Jelly Clark. This is kind of a short novella. I've really been interested in getting into P.J. Jelly Clark's stuff as well. Um, I think it's like this dark horror fantasy about the Ku Klux Klan and kind of reimagining their reign of terror. I've heard great things about all of Peter Jelly Clark's stuff so I think this is where I'm going to start because I do have the audiobook and like I said it's not very long. I think the physical book's only like less than 200 pages. This was another book that was really popular I think towards the end of last year so I'm going to be a year late but hopefully I'll read it. Then we have Lakewood by Megan Giddings. All I know about this is that I think it's about a black woman who starts to participate in this secret kind of medical program. It pays really well. Um, all her bills are paid, like medical bills are paid. And it seems too good to be true. I think it's like a very much a claustrophobic, really unsettling, confusing kind of horror. I, to me, the way this has been described, it's always given me some of the vibes to Catherine House in the kind of atmosphere that is built throughout the book. So I'm going to be interested to see whether it is similar to that in kind of the atmosphere. Then I have Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones, another Stephen Graham Jones. I actually know nothing about this. It's another really short novella, which is why I saved it on the script because it's a short audiobook. All the description says is that it's a contemporary horror story where a team prank goes very wrong and all hell breaks loose. Is there a supernatural cause, a psychopath on the loose or both? So my interest is piqued. What can I say? <laughs> I would like to see it. Next is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. I think this is split in time between present day and this girl's boarding school in the 1900s. It's something to do with like this legacy curse, I think. I don't really know. This is another one that has been super popular. A lot of people have read this. I've heard a lot of good things. I think Beth from Books Nest, I remember her really enjoying it when she read it. This one is not a short audiobook. This one is like a very long audiobook because the book is like 600 pages long. It's a very long book. So I'm a little bit intimidated to read this book. I don't know if this is going to be one I read soon, but I did save it nonetheless. Next is Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is short story horror, which I'm very intrigued by. I don't think I've ever read or ev like ever heard of any other short story like anthology horror. I've heard it's queer, it's funny, it's sexy, it's scary. It's like everything rolled into one really bizarre horror stories. And then finally, um, we've got Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. I literally know nothing about this book. <laughs> 
I think I got it for free. The, I have the ebook of this and I think I got it for free. Um, I think it's like historical horror. I think this is like a ghost story. It's gothic. Um, it's set in this like large manor house. And this is a book that was like really popular in the UK a little while back. So yeah, a little bit of historical horror. I love historical blended with other genres. We all know that. Like fantasy, historical mystery. My perfect combo. I love everything about this. So there we have it. That is all the horror book I have on my TBR. Let me know if you've read any of these, which ones you think I should prioritize getting to in October. If you've gotten to end this video, comment any weapon or scary or murdery or horrory emoji that you want to comment, like a knife or a ghost or the worried face. I don't know. Anything like that, comment that down below. I also always have the scroller up now at the end of my videos thanking my patrons, but I also just want to take a moment to thank my patrons so much because um, without them, I wouldn't be able to be doing YouTube as much as I am and like putting my all into it. So I just want to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Shout out you guys. I love you very much. I love you all, but I wanted to shout them out because um, I'm just incredibly, increasingly and like overwhelmingly grateful for all of my supporters over on Patreon. So I just want to say a little thank you for that. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye.